Uh, yeah, so, okay. Don't you think that, and this is again my opinion, don't you think that everyone is agnostic? We don't know shit. We are floating on the spaceship, the spherical spaceship across the cosmos. Our, our, our lifespan, 80 or 90, whatever years, is too insignificant to understand or make sense of it. Don't you think that discussing about, uh, you know, being an atheist or being a theist, Mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense. You're not going to get any conclusion. You're just going to waste time. Don't you think that all of us are agnostic? We don't know well, anything. Well, I think religiously, but I, for example, I don't think that your delusion that I'm creating, I don't think that I'm having this Skype conversation as part of a dream. I can recognize the difference between dream and reality. I think that Rishi Ja exists. So I'm not agnostic no. about your existence. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, I'm talking about from the like societal perspective, how to sit down and discuss, like, like uh, Roger, uh, oh, no, what was his name? The God Delusion. Uh, oh, uh, Howard Bloom. I think it was Howard Bloom. No, 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 no. Um, I, oh, I know. Uh, yeah. Richard, Richard, Dawkins, Richard Dawkins. Dawkins. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I, I put the book down halfway through because, again, he's saying, but then there's no proof, right? He could be, there can be a, a divine force, just as likely as there could be a alien civilization, right? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think statistically, there's probably some kind of aliens out there. Like I said, they're yeah. not going to be Klingons. They're more likely to be something like that yeah. black cloud that I mentioned. Um, but yeah. the, uh, I could be wrong. Well, it could be that every alien within at least the Milky Way is humans. It could be that, you know, there was a guy named Eric Von Donneken 50 years ago who had the idea of ancient astronauts. You know, he'd go to yeah. Indian temples. He'd go to Central American yeah. temples and say, oh, yeah. they went, you know, Vishnu was really a guy from a UFO riding in. Uh, the, the, the ancient astronauts built the Egyptian pyramids, which are really half a million years old rather than 5,000 years old. You know, it's, yeah. it's a... It's a load of nonsense, <clears throat> as far as we know. But you know, again, I'm not there. I, you know, I, I, I'm not. I've never been to the pyramids, so I can't say. But yeah. when I read books by people who are reputed to be uh, archaeologists, they all say it's nonsense and bunkum. I don't know if there are really black holes out there. I can't feel them. But I, I trust that the astronomy community of the world is not pulling the wool over our eyes. The same reason that I trust that that uh, global warming is man-made. Uh, everything yeah. that I've ever read suggests that, uh, but I, I don't know it personally. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, everybody has opinions, beliefs, and you cannot just question them, right? And the ancient ancient uh, aliens, everyone thinks that's psychobabble, but who knows? Well, there, right? are, there, are, there, are, there are people out there, there are people that you know have these odd beliefs. I think that it's getting better. I think that there are less religions. I think religion is less noxious than it was. I think Islam is in its last stages of dying off. I think Christianity in Europe is pretty much dead. Most people in, in Europe don't take the Pope seriously. Uh, in America, uh, we since we didn't don't have an official state religion, there are a lot of yahoos that, that feel a need oh, yeah. for it. But I think that's going to die off. Technology will kill it off. That is oh, good yeah. in some ways, but we don't want to get to a point where we live in a society of just hedonists that want to fuck sex bots, you know? Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, I've started reading uh, Nietzsche, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, what I feel is that the analysis by others is far more fascinating than the actual, what he has written. But first yeah. and foremost, because I don't, uh, I, I started with the Dust Park uh, Zarathustra, and yeah. it's sort of like the whole, uh, the way he's written, it's just going over my head. So I find that the people's analysis is far more fascinating. Well, I think uh, Nietzsche is one of those people that, uh, Nietzsche is one of those people that uh, uh, is sort of uh, a Rorschach mm-hmm. test. Uh, what you bring to Nietzsche uh, will affect what you get out of Nietzsche. For me, since yeah. I, I tend to try to go into something with a blank slate, uh, I think mm-hmm. he was a good writer. Uh, but I don't think, yeah. I don't think, well, something like uh, the idea of eternal recurrence, I, I think is silly. But let us, th- there's the philosophical argument that if time is infinite, that everything will occur infinitely again and again. Meaning that mm. that at an infinite point in the future, there'll be another Rishi and Dan talking just as we're talking in the exact same manner as we're talking. Mm. And then in another infinite, further on in, in infinity, there's going to be another Dan and another Rishi on and on and on and on and on and on. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I think that's absurd. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's yeah, absurd that's because... Abs- <coughs> that's a bit more abstract, but uh, like uh, his will of power or his uh, Ubermensch. And yeah. I think you are like the embodiment of the Ubermensch in your own way. <laughs> so do you think it's a fantastic, fantastic uh, concept, the Ubermensch? I think it's a good. I, I think it's a good concept, but I, I, I don't. 
I mean, yes, I I think I'm smarter than the average individual. I know I am. I know that I've got more talent and I work harder. But I've, I, I would be deluding myself to say that I'm an everyman. But by the same token, mm-hmm. I don't think that I have these superhuman powers just in the same way that LeBron James or Neymar, the soccer player, are superhuman yeah. in what they do. What I do is a bit is is significantly more complex, and I think will last longer than LeBron or Neymar or whoever. Yeah. Uh, but but it can be done. I the idea the idea that uh, there's uh, an exceptionalism to me. What uh, America has this idea that it's an exceptional country, meaning that it, the the previous rules don't apply to it. Well, I, I think it I think it does. Um, I think you know. There are lots of countries that have great histories. China, for all of its problems, for all of its eons oh, yeah. of of being run by abusive assholes, is still a great yeah. culture. China has we can learn a lot from what way China is, and hopefully one day that those people will be free and and be yeah. a bit more democratic. But uh, I don't I don't think that I'm exceptional in the sense that that uh, I'm doing anything. <laughs> that another person with exceptional talent couldn't do it. You know, just the way Stanley Kubrick, a a great artist, a great filmmaker, he was exceptional in the sense that he was great, but I don't think Mm -hmm. if you compare him to Orson Welles, they were both great filmmakers. Well, that there goes the idea that Kubrick was standing towering above each other because Welles is every bit the filmmaker Kubrick was, but in a different way. Same thing with someone like Cassavetes in his best film. Same thing yeah. with the people I've mentioned like Ozu and Satyajit Ray and uh, Akira Kurosawa and uh, Chelan from Turkey. These yeah. people are uh, uh, fantastic filmmakers, uh, but they're all different. So uh, yes and no, it depends on how you define and look at it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, actually, I mean, I think we'll have to disagree on this because I believe, like, taking your example, that it is your will of power. That is what makes you an uber rich. And your will of, power, will of power is your belief that your writing will be discovered 500 years from now. What more can you want? Don't well, you yeah, I mean, I, I would agree that, that, that I take responsibility for my life. You know, I, yeah. I, I take responsibility pro and con. There are things I wish I could change in my life. Everyone does. Well, whether it's uh, things that I saw as a kid, whether it's things that I, I've said or done uh, in the past. But, you know, uh, the, the will to power only goes so far because, um, well, I think, for example, I think that my wife, like I said, who has these more artistic uh, uh, anxieties and neuroses could mm. do it, uh, could uh, overcome this. Uh, I think there are some people, especially when we're talking about things, uh, I don't know, like some mental illnesses like bipolarity or like um, uh, uh, other things. Uh, there, 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 yeah, there may be things that you need to have drugs or you need to have some kind of maybe in 20 years we'll have little bots that can go in and and rewrite someone's genetic program Mm -hmm. that just the way we could make someone not a cripple or make someone not a a dwarf we could make someone not a schizophrenic in in utero yeah yeah (laughs) and uh, yeah uh, going on the topic of nietzsche so you wrote in one of your reviews hitler was a dedicated racist and or psychotic Mm -hmm. or a brilliant political opportunist. Now, there's nothing wrong with being an opportunist, right? You don't think it's, no, it's a bad quality? No, it, it depends on what you're taking. Up. If, if, if uh, you know, if you and I are, are pals and I take the opportunity to try to uh, rape your girlfriend, well, that's an opportunity because I could overpower yeah. and you're not there. That's not a good opportunist. But if I take the opportunity yeah. to uh, speak to a thousand students at your university and, and tell them this, that, or the other thing to try to help them, that's a good mm-hmm. opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Although, although I would say he was a horrible tactician and a strategist, right? Well, I think I, I've said this before, and I think I said it in one of the shows I did about World War II, one of my interviews, is that the difference mm-hmm. between Stalin and Hitler is they were both mm-hmm. psychopaths, but Hitler was psychotic, meaning he was detached mm-hmm. from reality. Stalin, mm-hmm. to a certain degree, was, but he wasn't as psychotic as Hitler. And that, mm-hmm. I think, is the difference. You can talk all you want about the Soviet Union's advantage in, in man- manpower and in oil and, and uh, resources. But if Hitler had been a little more attached to reality 
and had waited mm. just a few months uh, or waited yeah. six months to invade Russia in, in the spring of 42 and well, 41, whenever it was mm. when the, the fiasco yeah. at Stalingrad, you know, the Germans could have won it. Uh, they could have at least yeah. controlled most of Asia. They never would have conquered yeah. the U.S., I don't believe. I think I think the Americas and the Western Hemisphere were not going to be conquered. Yeah. And I think eventually, maybe by the 70s or 80s, Hitlerism would have died with him uh, yeah. because of yeah. some other things. But again, this is this is this is the stuff of science fiction. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, uh, and this is one claim that I had to ask you. You say uh, Friedrich Nietzsche was both a collectivist and an individualist. Mm -hmm. How? I mean, I, I think Nietzsche is like the poster child for individualism. How, how do you think as a collectivist? Well, I I think he I think he uh, I I'd have to see what what. Uh, what the context it, of it was in, I think it was in the review of that, uh, there was a person and he says the Nazis and Nietzsche, the comparison, and there was a TV show and he reviewed that TV show or a documentary, Na uh, Nazism and Nietzsche, something like that. Okay, yeah, uh, I, I, again, I, I don't have that at my fingertips, so I, I, I'll have to pass on that simply because I don't know what context I was speaking in, um, and uh, it's early in the morning and my mind isn't at its peak, right, so yeah. 